new arrivals are exhausted, dehydrated. Many have suffered sun or heat stroke. Heat stroke. We're seeing daily temperatures at between 40 and 45 degrees C. People are moving to places including Zaku and Doha town where uh, 16 school, bil school buildings have been made available. Food and water and medical care are being provided. As of now, an estimated 20 to 30,000 people remain trapped on Sinja Mountain without food, water or shelter. Access to these families is extremely uh, limited. We here in America are, of course, focused on how the terrorist group ISIS and others will affect us, how it will perhaps change the way we deal internationally, and also what their possible incursion here in America would mean to the safety of our homes and our families. We are rightfully so focused on this facet of what may be another growing terrorist attack on American soil. In order to better understand the brutality of ISIS and their ilk, though, we need to grasp what is currently happening in the Middle East. And we're not talking about just the war itself. We're talking about what's happening to those with no home, those with no hope, and children with no way out. Let's welcome to Midpoint the president of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council and one seeking to bring attention to an issue that is often buried in the media crush. Juliana Tamarazzi joins us again. Juliana, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me on it. Juliana, we are now talking about schools specifically here, the kids, the displacement of individuals who are staying in schools. And I want to preface this by saying this is not a story I think that many Americans have heard to this point because as so much happens, even in a 24-7, 365 news cycle, stories such as these get pushed to the back when you have other things that are happening here. Give us an idea of exactly what we're talking about here with the schools and the fact that these people are being thrown in the street now. Yes, as you and your audience know, there have been about 200,000 IDPs, internally displaced persons, fleeing to the, as far north as possible to cities such as Erbil, as Dohuk, and other villages in the northern part of Iraq. There are 600 schools at, in Erbil as of three days ago. The Kurdish regional government had ordered to be emptied of all the IDPs, internally displaced persons. These individuals don't have a place to go. They will end up on the streets. They already are sleeping on the in the parks. They're sleeping on the side of the road. There was a bishop that came in, an Assyrian church of the East Bishop, Marava, who came in from Iraq two days ago. He said there are kids that are sleeping on bare concrete floors. So this was as of three days ago that the order had been given to 600 schools in Erbil. In Dohuk, another city in Iraq, there there is a Dominican Sisters, St. Catherine of Siena, Dominican orders that they alone are taking care of 3,000 IDPs, and they have less than 30 days to empty those schools, because schools, really, the kids have to start going back to school. And really, nobody's talking about this. I believe you are the first major news network that is talking about this, and I thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this. Uh, the UN has been talking about setting up camps. There really is no blueprint of how this is going to be done. The world is silent on this issue. The aid that is being sent there barely gets to these people. Uh, the, now the winter is upon them. As far north as we can go in the, in the Kurdish region, the villages, already the winter is there. At nights, they're asking for two, three blankets and space heaters. In Dohuk and in Erbil cities, within the next three weeks, they're anticipating winters to start being really, really harsh. So what is there to do? I, this is really appalling that the world is silent. I have to tell you, the Assyrian Aid Society of Iraq is an organization, a native organization that helps these people. They were telling us if they had six and a half million dollars, and only six and a half million, they could set up winterized camps, winterized tents for about 600 families times five. That's a lot of people that can be uh, helped within 30 days, but the aid doesn't get to them right away. And that's why I'm here to talk about this, that there are organizations that are indigenous to the land that can be helped. For example, my organization is Iraqi Christian Relief Council. We send the money to these smaller organizations and they mobilize the aid. Now, when the president talks about, and he did just a couple of days ago, the humanitarian aid that America will give overseas or certainly in these theaters of war, is this the most, I mean, certainly it is to you the most crushing issue that needs to be addressed right away. As you see all these different things that are happening there, is this the most critical? Are we talking about something here that simply is sitting right out there, and if we wanted to put $6.5 million in humanitarian aid, this is exactly the first place it needs to go? 
absolutely. It needs to be, it, there are two needs here. One is immediate, which is these, the winter coming down very quickly. And the second is the Nineveh Plain area that would be a safe haven for all minorities, not only Christians. So as far as the, the aid is concerned, for about 6,600 families, this is very critical that this six and a half million dollars or so needs to be given to these smaller organizations to be able to set up camp. And you have to, I have to tell you something, when the aid is pledged, or for example, when UN or other larger organizations pledge an aid, it takes a long time for that aid to get to these people. This is just real, a realistic fact. I mean, think about Haiti. Money was pledged, being pledged left and right, but by the time it was getting to the ground, people had been dead already. And that's why it's important to support the smaller groups that are working diligently on the ground. And this includes Yazidis. There are, in the Assyrian camps, we have even Muslims that we're harboring, that we're helping, not harboring, but we're helping them too. So this is not only a Christian issue, this is an issue for the Yazidis and other minorities that have been persecuted. And now they're starving, either starving to death or dying because medication doesn't get to them right away. There's so many people dying of heart disease and diabetes because their medication is not there. There are children that are so cold at night. And that's why when the aid is pledged, and it doesn't get there within the next two, three months. I mean, this is really a human tragedy, human atrocity. Juliana, I only got about 30, 40 seconds left. How many children are we talking about here? I can't give you uh, an exact number. I'll tell I guess, you. I guess. There are about 200,000. How many? I guess. Just I, would a guess. Say, I would say close to 100,000. Each family has at least three children. At least three children. So it's about half, it's about 100,000, and I'm talking only Christians. Each mine, each Yazidi family has between six to seven to eight children. And there are about 400,000 people that are displaced in Iraq that are Yazidi alone. You do the math. If we have people, and we certainly do, if we have people around the world watching right now, is there anything that the individuals can do about this? Please go to IraqiChristianRelief.org. We are a non nonprofit organization here in the States. We have been working with very good organizations on the ground for the last seven years. And also, demand, when you, de when you give money, demand to know where this money is going is very important. There have been so many times we have pledged 100% of the funds to go to these people. We're all volunteers at Iraqi Christian Relief Council, Ed. We yeah. don't collect income. So please be vigilant. Please care for those persecuted. IraqiChristianRelief.org. Juliana Tamarazzi, thank you so much for bringing this to attention. As I told you, and I promised you once before, we will stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And stay with us, because right here, Midpoint will continue.